OK. I was once driven to A&E in an ice cream van. In place of a siren, the driver turned on the musical chimes. <laughs> What happened to you that involved having to go to A and E? Well, I was um, I was playing um, rounders, and <laughs> I ran in between bases, and I sort of went over on my ankle, and it was in Cornwall. Your ankle? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's how far out of place it went. <laughs> Blimey! So I was in. I mean, real proper agony, like. Honestly, I thought I was going to black out. It hurt so much. And um, somebody phoned an ambulance. And it probably was about 25 minutes. Um, and still no sign. This bloke came over from the ice cream van. And um, he said, I'll, I'll take you to the hospital. So they're trying to dial the emergency service. Perhaps instead of dialing no, 999, they press 99. <laughs> <laughs> So you've gone over on your ankle, yeah. and the ice cream man has seen you from a distance, hasn't well, we he? didn't have a car. We all got the train down, so no one had a car with them. Right. So this bloke said, I'll give you... And I was just... The idea of getting to somewhere where they could just give me a painkilling injection would have been lovely. And presumably you didn't get the siren going straight away? No, it, it wasn't the siren. It was, it was green sleeves. Well, green sleeves, but... <laughs> Did you want to give him some money for lost trade? Oh, no. <laughs> John, when you've been a celebrity a bit longer, you'll realise that money's no longer relevant. <laughs> <laughs> Whereabouts in Cornwall were you? I was in Truro. I don't understand why you would put the siren on. I, I think I said... Died. I didn't mention to him that I liked um, music from the Tudor period. <laughs> I also don't understand why you were in Truro, because if you didn't drive, you would have got the fast service to Penzance. <laughs> Ella Holiday was a combination of rail travel and taxis and a little bit of ice cream. Great bands. So, time for a decision. What do we think? I'm not happy with I... it. You're not happy with it? Not happy with it. You're not having it? Oh, I think it's true. I don't want to become Trevor Travel Planner, but if... <laughs> I mean, a rounders kit is something you throw in the boot of a car. You don't take it on a train. OK, so you're saying it's I true. I think it's true. John thinks it's a lie. Yeah. We'll say it's a lie, then. You're going to say it's a lie? OK, Frank, truth or lie? It is a lie. Yes, it's a lie. Frank wasn't driven to A&E in an ice cream van. In fact, accidents involving ice cream vans are incredibly rare, yet always result in the tragic loss of hundreds and thousands. <laughs> I once found a suitcase and took it to the police station. When they opened it, it contained 34 bunches of bananas. <laughs> David, uh, where did you find the suitcase? At a train station. Um, well, there are lots of... Do you want a specific train station? Well, no, I'm just sort of thinking that you, you're in a train station, you see a suitcase, you think, I must take that to the police. It that's, was, uh... that's potentially a, a bad approach. No, it was just lying, and I'd say to a couple of people, is that your suitcase? And it was in the climate of fear, and I started to think, well, maybe I should be a good citizen. So I took the suitcase over, and I headed straight to a traffic British transport police guy and told them what had happened. So you, mo you moved the suitcase you thought might be a bomb? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So you also give it a good rattle. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't so much I thought it was a bomb, I just thought maybe somebody had left a suitcase. I mean, well, that wouldn't be a response to the climate of fear, though. That would have been a response oh, to the climate of forgetfulness. I kind of panicked, I panicked. <laughs> <laughs> Who opened the suitcase to divulge well, all those bananas? I came in and the British transport police guy took it into his office and then they scanned it with some... whatever they scanned it with, some... Those things... I get weight throws! Part of this is why would anybody put 34 <laughs> bunches of bananas into a suitcase? That's exactly what the chief terror inspector said. He was baffled. That's why. Right. <laughs> Did they ever find this guy? Was I never kept you know. up to date. I don't have a clue. I just left it. You haven't kept uh, in touch. No. You... Well, <laughs> he's here tonight. <laughs> I'm the king of the swingers. <laughs> What I doubt here is that, is that if you've taken a piece of unattended luggage to the police, 
I don't think they're going to then immediately open it. Oh, it, immediately... it was no longer unattended when I got to the police. No, I was but you're, you're, <laughs> you're saying... But that's not going to reassure them, because you're saying, I've no idea whether or not this has got a bomb in it. So... I never use those words. You don't, you don't use the word bomb in this situation. That just... You do a mime. <laughs> I'm, I'm worried this might be... A... What? <laughs> Right, we need a decision. Truth or lie? Well, it's... Mm. You think it's a lie? I do, really. Yeah, I think it's a lie. Well, we'll say it's a lie. You're going to say it's a lie. OK, uh, Kevin, were you telling the truth? Eh, uh, it's a lie. <laughs> yeah. Yes, uh, it was a very big lie. Kevin didn't take a suitcase containing 34 bunches of bananas to a police station. <laughs> When filming is over for the day, Lord Sugar and I sometimes wind down by playing ping-pong <laughs> on the boardroom table. <laughs> That's a hell of a story. True. <laughs> David, what do you think? Have a, have a minute just to let it sink yeah. in. <laughs> you don't play on a proper table tennis table. No. You just play you, on the boardroom table. You can table. buy... Um, it's underneath, actually, in the boardroom. It's rolled up. Right. And then you unroll it and you clamp it on the boardroom table, stretched across, kind of, and you're in business. So is it just a net, just a net, or just is there net. also there's no, not, we don't not have a, the lines. A, a mat with lines? No, no. It's just... the table is slightly bigger than regulation size. <laughs> right. <laughs> do you, do you... Is it not also curved? Curved. I thought it was curved. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it curved like... yeah. You're thinking of curve. swimming. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's difficult to tell watching on television, but yeah. how much room? Is there at, e at the ends of the table? Oh, plenty. OK, I believe you. Ample. <laughs> yeah. You have to be able to back off quite a way when playing table tennis properly, I happen to know. <laughs> Can we stamp on this immediately? Lord Sugar's boardroom is plenty big enough for almost everything. <laughs> <laughs> Yet you play table tennis. <laughs> Where do you keep the bats? Do you, are they under the table under, during the... Under the She's table. She's left now, isn't she? Under the table. <laughs> <laughs> not Margaret, no, 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 no. no. I'll tell I'm her. not talking about Margaret. <laughs> Margaret's no bat. <laughs> okay. Tell us how this whole thing started. It was my idea. You crazy fool. <laughs> it was my idea. No, but the point is that... It's a fairly long, drawn-out drawn out process. It is tense. It, it is nerve-wracking, particularly for, uh, for, for, mm. for Karen and I, yeah. because we don't know what on earth's going on. It's only Lord Sugar who's master of all this. And I just sort of murmured to him once that I find this very difficult. And he said, well, look, don't worry. Next time I'll bring in a net and some balls and some bats. <laughs> and it'll help you relax. <laughs> and that, and it, it grew out of that. So what does Karen do? How does she relax? Cos if you're playing... Tim She's umpire. She's umpire? <laughs> She's got a very keen eye. <laughs> so what do you think, David? I think this is absolute nonsense, <laughs> albeit convincingly told. I, I think if Alan Sugar wanted to play ping-pong, he'd have a proper table yeah. table and he'd play it on that. So, so we, we think it's not true. We think it's not true. No. I think it's a lie. Yes. OK. Um, Nick, truth or lie? It's a damned lie. <laughs> <laughs> It was a lie. Uh, Nick doesn't wind down by playing ping pong on the boardroom table with Lord Sugar. I am currently seeing a hypnotist to cure me of my compulsion to visit hypnotists. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think this is going to take too long. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been had a compulsion to see hypnotists? Well, it started off, I had a fear of heights, and I visited a, a lot of different practitioners. It is a serious enough thing. I mean, it is. It's unusual to be this high. Uh, <laughs> and, yeah, I tried hypnosis, and then I seemed to be getting something temporary from it, so then I ended up visiting a lot more hi what, hypnotists. What and... were you getting temporary from it? I was getting some relief from it for a while. From your, from your fear of heights? Yeah. So you're now relieved of that at this point. Why would you go back? Oh, because then uh, the relief is temporary. So I, I ended up going back and then I ended up getting uh, 
really uh, addicted to visiting dip different hip What do they do? <laughs> Normally they just put me under for a minute. Put and under then what? Put yeah. water. <laughs> they, they make me, it's serious, they make me lie, <laughs> lie on the ground. So they make you lie on the ground? How's that going to cure your fear of fires? That should, surely they should make you lie on top of the cupboard. <laughs> Well, I am knocked out during this, and then when I uh, when I wake up, they put me on top of something. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, how many different hypnotists have you seen? I don't know. It's into the hundreds at this point. <laughs> hundreds of hypnotists. It was costing. Most of my income was going on it. I mean, I would do whatever money I could get was just going straight into hypnosis. Then. <laughs> how long have you been seeing the the one you've been seeing now for to get to get you off being seeing the hypnotist? Well. This one, about two years now. I mean, um, it, it, so the yeah. man you've been seeing for the last two years has been specifically to for, for the problem that you want to stop seeing hypnotists. <laughs> not, not for the hype thing, anyway. Just, I'm addicted to hypnotists, I need to stop. That's what you're seeing him for. Yeah. And you've been seeing him for two years. <laughs> we are nearly, at, we're nearly out of the woods. <laughs> Do they ever touch you in any way? Generally, the sort of uh, severe vertigo hypnosis I get doesn't involve physical contact, but it does involve being winched up. Winched up? <laughs> well, winched up to get to get the height. So then, when you vertigo. come around, you're you're out of height, and you so, think so this you're, is you're, normal. When you when you when he puts you under, well, this is going back when I had the serious problem. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. But well, let's go back to that problem. The that interests me, the winching up. So yeah. he, they, they they put you out, and, uh, and then you're gone. Do you remember being? Do you wake up and go? No, you're How gone. Get up you put on a sort of Velcro suit at the stars, <laughs> and then. <laughs> Same. No, it's like you're, I'm gone, and then it's come down from up there on top of the uh, <laughs> top of the cupboard. So they winch you up, and then winch you down onto the cupboard. Now I can get down because I've been <laughs> hypnotised. So, but you've been winched up to go on top of the cupboard <laughs> while I'm under. Yeah. So he winches you up, then slightly nudges, slightly nudges you over the cupboard and winches you down again. <laughs> why? Why does he have to put you on the cupboard? Why does he just winch you up and keep you winched? What's the advantage of being on a cupboard over being winched up? Have you got a fear of being up high on cupboards? <laughs> What's the name of the hypnotist you see? Dr. Spanks. <laughs> <laughs> never before, never before. As a You're man. doing really well. <laughs> I don't think I've ever yeah, done it. it. <laughs> You know, when you, you know when you start a sentence and you don't know how it's going to end? <laughs> it's never happened before with just two words, doctor and spank. <laughs> It's a tricky one. Well, it's a tough one. I'm going with you on this one. What do you say? <laughs> Even if I believed everything else, I've never met anybody German called Spanks. <laughs> it's S E E umblaut. G H N K S. You just ruined it. <laughs> oh, is that what ruined it? Because there is never an umlaut on an E. There's never a man being velcroed and winched up. <laughs> That's the bit you want to be focusing on, I think. Not the spelling of his surname. Right. So, Lee. I say it's a lie, then. He's saying it's a lie. David O'Doherty, was that fantastic tale the truth, or was it a lie? Incredible as it seems, that is a lie. Yeah. Yeah. Good yes, uh, Unsurprisingly, it's a lie. David isn't seeing a hypnotist to cure him of a compulsion to visit hypnotists. Uh, I went to see a hypnotist once. All the time he was saying, look into my eyes, look in... Sorry, sorry, not hypnotist, optician. <laughs> it is Lee. <laughs> Every Sunday, I treat myself to a relaxing bath with three squirts of furry liquid in it. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because when I was a kid, uh, we, we used to use 
a bit of ferry liquid if we'd run out of bubble bath. And so... Yes, I, I can believe that, <laughs> but then you decided, in fact, why do we need the bubble bath? <laughs> but, but why only on a Sunday? You shower the rest of the week and bath on a well, Sunday? Well, I'm old school. <laughs> right. There's nothing wrong with an all-over flannel wash. <laughs> <laughs> Under the armpits on a Monday, down below on a Tuesday, <laughs> feet on a Wednesday, knees on a Thursday. This is like a really dirty version of a Craig David song. <laughs> So you, you ran out of bubble bath many years ago and have never restocked. No, not true. What happens when not you run true. out of fairy liquid? I run out of bubble bath all the time and I'm always restocking on a Monday. How can you but run out of bubble bath the... if you only bath on a Sunday? Yeah, don't tell me you... Ah, you rubbish! You, said you shower oh, the rest of the week. Yes. Oh, bath this is rich shower. coming from a man who irons bread. <laughs> I stick it on the <laughs> a, bit of, a bit of liquid soap on the flannel under the arms on a Monday. Uh, you put bubble bath on a flannel? <laughs> You're telling me you've never used bubble bath in a shower because you've run out of soap? That's all the time. Liquid soap. Well, no wonder you keep running out of bubble exactly. bath on a Sunday. That, you're just like my wife. <laughs> in many ways. <laughs> David, what do you think? Uh, I don't think this is true. <laughs> uh, Greg? It's cobblers. <laughs> I think it's a lie. We think this isn't it's true. It's a lie. Well, Lee, here's your chance. <laughs> Truth or lie? Well, 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 <clears throat> here we go. It is, in fact, a lie. <laughs> possession. Possession, right. Now, there's a box, Mackenzie, under the desk. Would you take the possession out, pop it up on the desk, and then read the card for us, please? Oh. Oh, hello. Well, uh, this is... This is my orchidometer. It was a present from my sister. What, what does an orchidometer do? Yeah, that's true. I'll tell you what, I've seen one of those, and it wasn't called an orchidometer. <laughs> Admittedly, I haven't seen the whole length of it before. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, what's an orchidometer, Mackenzie? It is a piece of medical apparatus yes. used for determining <clears throat> the size of testicles in male humans. Yeah. <laughs> Why do you need to know the size of male testicles in humans? I'm 42, nobody's ever gone, hey, extra large. <laughs> I don't. This was bought for me by my sister. Wait a minute. A... What? <laughs> Some of them are so small, they're tiny. You'd be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> my sister bought this for me for nostalgic so you keep reasons. Nostalgic? Yeah. <laughs> to remind you... You... Hang on. If this is to remind you both of the good old days, we don't want to. <laughs> Well, surely, nostalgia. In my sister, when I was growing up, you know, as my size bit, she would do a little mark, pencil mark on the wall, kitchen wall. Fair enough. But for your testicles. Oh, you're getting taller. You know how when someone gives you a jumper, they say, "Oh, try it on now." <laughs> Which one are you? You must have done it. I've, ne I've never done it. You liar! I've never done it. <laughs> why would I want to? I'll tell you why, because the second we get out of the studio, I'm doing it, so I don't. <laughs> I am so. I want to do it now in front of the audience. Well, do you know what? I think we'd all be very happy for you to do it now. Let's do it. Oh, no! <laughs> have you watched it? <laughs> it hasn't been anywhere near any. Well, don't bring it to me. I don't want to. Hey, Rock, bring back memories. <laughs> Right. I will do it, but I'll do it under the desk. Are you not going to get your... Yeah. Come on. <laughs> I'm going to get one. Just one, then. Maybe <laughs> halfway. Come on, then. Come on, then. No, I'm not. <laughs> this is a real medical thing. Yeah. Why did you just sit there? Why did you get it? Because when I was younger, I was a very slight chap. Not the when you were younger, you were slight. Of man <laughs> Blimey, what were you, you a get. stick, man? <laughs> my, and I, I used to have to go to a hospital to be measured in all sorts of creative... And, and my, Keep and it light. One of the ways <laughs> they measured me was using an orchidometer. They measured uh, your testicles, really? Yeah, not with that one. What are with, you going to say? With your testicle measuring device, you spoil us, Ambassador. <laughs> The question is whether his sister got it for him, and not what this is. His sister got it for him. He's telling the 
Could you, can you not? Am I... But this can't be look, real. Take this, those. This can't be real. <laughs> Have a look at him through those. No, tell him your sister gave you that as a present. Have you got truth glasses? <laughs> <laughs> They're not allowed on this show. <laughs> Lee, it is time to take a guess. Imagine going to the doctors and going, is that normal to have that many? <laughs> hey, take a look at this, Doc. <laughs> Tell me that's normal. They're purple, but it's the wrong amount. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so what do you think? I'm going to go with it. OK, then. Uh, well, why not? It, it, it sounds true. True. Saying true. OK, <laughs> Mackenzie, what's the answer? It is true. Well, it was true. Mackenzie's sister did buy him that orchidometer. Uh, Mackenzie frequently brings it out at dinner parties and uses it as an icebreaker. And more often than not, a morale crusher. <laughs> OK. I'm haunted by a recurring dream in which I'm a potato. <laughs> How does the dreaming realisation that you're a potato yes. manifest itself? Um, I'm being chased. Oh, right. Oh, yeah, of course, because potatoes get chased all the time. I'm being chased by a pitchfork. Right. How it's... do you know you're a potato? Um... Because you can't <laughs> move. No, 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 I can't. I've got... It's like Mr Potato Head. I wear a little trilby hat, little legs, and I'm running along the garden <laughs> like that, uh, with a pitchfork trying so to a... poke me. And I'm sort of climbing up trees and things, and the pitchfork's sort of going for me. And... Has it ever caught you? Um, no, it has never caught me yet. And then, uh, just as it is going to catch me, I think I wake up. What do you think that the pitchfork wants to do? Are you, are you, oh. Has it attempted to harvest it's a, you? It, it's a family show. I think all the symbols. <laughs> Heavy with symbolism, David. Yes, it, it is. is I mean, the, yes, there's the a lot sturdy of sturdy steel of the pitchfork, mm. the soft, <laughs> pliant flesh of the potato. <laughs> I, I, I'm well, getting a little say... worked up just thinking about it. To be honest with you. He didn't say it was boiled, did he? No, I think it's baked. Baked, oh, it is baked potato. So you're a, you're a baked potato? I, I think I'm a baked... What, what are you doing in the garden if you've already been cooked? How yeah. long have you had this stream? I've had it... He only has it when he's mashed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've had quite a bit, actually, you know. They're, they're, it's quite at the forefront of my dream. I'm just sitting here listening to you. You could be related to Len Goodman from Strictly <laughs> Camp Darts. <laughs> Could you? Could, could you just yeah, say for me... Look at that, yeah. <laughs> your Paso Doble was lovely. I liked it. It was cool. You're a bit over there, but you're trying hard. I'm going to give you six. <laughs> I'm doing Len Goodman. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, David? Uh, well, it's possible, isn't it? What do you think? Uh, I'm not convinced. I think it's, uh, without question, a lie, because when he was asked how the potato was moving, I actually saw Phil's brain working to, <laughs> to think of the Mr Potato Head. Yeah. It is true that lots of people have dreams, don't they, where they're being sort of chased, don't they? That's quite a, a natural mm. thing. Yes, generally, they, they, have, they haven't become a root vegetable. <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> you think it could be true, don't you? Look, my brain is shot <laughs> by this game. I think anything could be true. <laughs> I am so sure it's a lie. Well, we're going to say it's a lie, then. So it's going to say it's mm. a lie. OK. Phil Tufnell, were you telling the truth or were you lying? I was telling... <laughs> no! It's true. <laughs> uh, Phil is haunted by a recurring dream in which he is a potato. I have written and had published a trilogy of romantic novels under a female pen name. Ooh. OK, Ooh. Steve. What, what's the female pen mm. name, Mary? Mary Windsor. Mary Windsor. Mary Windsor? <laughs> yeah. And at, at what stage in your career was this? Early. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, I'm, I'm, I'd written, uh, done one book of anecdotes, and the publisher said uh, they fancied doing a sort of sub 
Barbara Cartland, you know, a sort of one of those. No, were the anecdotes particularly romantic in your book? No, of no, not originally. I don't know why they chose me, but I went for it and I got away with three of them, which didn't sell. Obviously, nobody's heard of them. But were they linked by the Was it a trilogy or were they, uh, you know, was it the same no, story? No, there were three separate stories. Great. So that's all three plots, please, uh, off the cover. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Book number one. Yes, <laughs> book number one was a shameless rip-off of Lady Chatterley's Lover. It was about a guy who worked on the estate and the lady of the manor. It was just blatant. <laughs> and what was it called, Barry? What was the title of that one? My Land. It was a quotation from the lady of the manor who said it at a crucial point in the plot. Oh, how crucial. <laughs> on their first falling out. They oh. become lovers, and then it became very tense and something, and then she became very autocratic with him. Mm. And it was a very moving moment, if I say so myself. <laughs> <laughs> and, and book two? Book two was set in Spain, and a bullfighter was involved. <laughs> All right. Well, same plot, I'm not kidding you. <laughs> it was book two called My Bull? <laughs> I'm ashamed to say it was called Hasta la Vista. <laughs> OK. I wish you wouldn't go on about this. I'm not proud of them. <laughs> I, I, I think I want to read them. Mm. Yeah. Um, and book three? One Year, it was called. One Year. One Year. You didn't go overboard in the titles. <laughs> No, simple, self-explanatory titles. Oh, what was the plot of book three? <laughs> the plot of book three was on board a liner. Right. <laughs> on board a liner. My liner. This posh, frustrated woman went on a liner and met the steward. Right. <laughs> Why did they stop this? This is gold. <laughs> Which one, now that you look back, Barry, with mm. the wisdom that you've accrued over the years... Yes. Which one are you proudest of? The third one, because I was starting to get the hang of it. <laughs> Not... <laughs> uh, the, um, the publishers disagreed. They thought you were losing what hang of it you'd ever had. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. What are you thinking? David what do you think, Lorraine? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just don't see Barry having the time to do it. And I could like write those thing. drunk in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think we think it's a lie, don't we? It's probably you a sure? lie, yeah. I think it's a yeah. lie. Mm -hmm. Barry Cryer, truth or lie? Dramatic pause. <gasps> Music is heard in the background. It was alive. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lie. Barry hasn't written a trilogy of romantic novels under a female pen name. Uh, I love romantic fiction. And the new Jilly Cooper book features a highly sexed woman who makes love in the strangest of places. It's on the shelves Monday. Hanging from a chandelier Tuesday. <laughs> Top of the wardrobe Wednesday. <laughs>